Hello and welcome to The Power of Open, a series of programs covering Red Hat's open ecosystem where we talk with some of Red Hat's key partners to discuss the pressing topics in the industry. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV, and in this show we're going to look at the network from the data center to the edge. And joining me today are Ali Kafel, who is Senior Director, Global ISVs and OEMs, TME Vertical at Red Hat, and James Kelly, Senior Director of Product Management at Juniper Networks. Hello, both of you. Thanks so much for taking part in our program today. Let me start by asking you, James, what are the key trends that you are seeing in how service providers are increasing their operational economics? How does open development factor in? Yeah, Guy, what service providers are dealing with today to improve operational economics are a lot more partnerships. Um, one of the things that's especially pronounced now in, in the changing landscape of partnerships is partnering with the hyperscalers, right? The likes of the large cloud providers, in other words, um, for hybrid cloud infrastructure, obviously taking a page of hybrid and multi-cloud popularity out of the enterprise and using the flexibility that that brings. Another thing that we continue to see a strong development of as they build out their, their 5G, their telco cloud infrastructures are um, strong partnerships with the global system integrators, right? Uh, this provides the opportunity for more flexibility. Um, for example, as they can pick and choose and have the system integrator integrate the best parts for the solution tailor-made for them as opposed to just a contrast of like a vertical uh, stack, a vertical telephony stack. Um, to give some other examples outside of partnerships, I mean, choosing tools, products from the vendors that address one-to-many uh, management, whether that's one-to-many uh, use cases, like for example, you know, Juniper's uh, CN2 Cloud Native Control Networking product that addresses both Kubernetes OpenShift and OpenStack, um, so multiple uh, things there that kind of span new and, and old, so to speak, and multi-cluster management, right? Nobody has just one deployment um, area. They have many. I'm sure we'll talk more about that, but that's another thing that uh, Juniper has emphasized in our products. Uh, and then getting into the, the other part of your question around open, right? Um, certainly choosing... Uh, Kubernetes, OpenShift, open source uh, and open standards based things. I mean, we can talk a lot about uh, about open source, but the the resiliency of using uh, a system like Kubernetes these days to deploy microservice based applications leads to obviously increased uh, elasticity, which is kind of one of the things that containerized applications are famous for. And as the telephony application vendors move from virtual network functions to containerized network functions that run in, in systems like OpenShift. That obviously uh, gives them not just increased resiliency, but the increased business agility along with it. And Ali, what are the key ways that Red Hat and Juniper are supporting this development together? Uh, there, there are really two ways. One is indirectly, we're working together with open source, as James mentioned. Um, we uh, Red Hat is is a leader in open source communities, as as you probably know, and uh, Juniper is is also very engaged in the open source community. So we work together in advising our customers what communities they should engage with and should leverage. In some cases, contribute to. Uh, and then the second way is really a more direct way, and that is in providing pre-integrated cloud infrastructure platform product, which is a combination of the Juniper CN2 and uh, Red Hat OpenStack and Red Hat OpenShift provided as a pre-integrated solution to our customer base. And what that does is it has huge advantages over a vertical solution because with a pre-integrated horizontal cloud infrastructure, our customers not only get the benefits of a horizontal solution, such as flexibility to choose uh, other vendors of their choice and standardized configuration and automation, no vendor locking and so on, but they also get the unified single vendor accountability 
for SLA. And James, can you um, add your perspective to this collaboration? Yeah, sure. To add on what uh, Ali was talking about, I mean, Juniper has uh, long since worked with Red Hat, um, integrating even before we had CN2, which is our cloud native edition of control networking. We had the classic edition of it. We were uh, certified with Red Hat OpenStack and working uh, to do the same with Red Hat OpenShift. Now that CN2 is rebased on Kubernetes as an extension of Kubernetes itself, um, it snaps very natively into OpenShift. We've um, we worked very early on in the architecture of that product to ensure that it was going to work very well with the OpenShift installers and that the Red Hat customers would have a good customer experience out of the box with CN2. Uh, we continue to engage in the certification program, which gives customers a lot of confidence that what they're getting is very well tested. And above and beyond that, Juniper and Red Hat actually have uh, joint labs together where we have you know, our brightest you know, solution architects come together and test these things out, um, innovate, do things that we think are gonna come up in like the next year, two years, um, that we're each road mapping and try them out together. Yeah, and James, how can providers drive investments in future telco infrastructure whilst at the same time maintaining their traditional networks? Yeah, you know, telcos for decades have uh, been pulling off that balancing act of, um, as Ali was saying, you know, digital transformation, always um, having a foot in trying to modernize while maintain what they have as their existing footprint. One of the things about networks is that, you know, they have to work with the existing brownfield networks. So open standards play a big role there, but um, the, other than those sort of tried and true things that are that are obvious, you know, telcos are also diversifying their businesses, um, looking at ways they can restructure, refocus their business um, with new investments or even divesting from areas or selling them off. Um, we talked in one of the earlier questions about the partnerships and how the changing changing landscape of partnerships is affecting uh, telcos, and I think that insofar as you know, straddling the new and the old having those partnerships with the hyperscalers and the option to use cloud-based infrastructure, um, which is certainly you know, relevant for the Juniper and Red Hat, OpenShift and, and CN2 solution. Let's look at the edge now. And where do you see edge technologies heading in the future? And what joint plans do you have to better enable service providers in this space? Ali, let me ask you this first. Sure. Yeah, so obviously what... What something we're all experiencing today is the huge amount of data that's going through the networks, right? Today, we know that 70% of all traffic is driven by video streaming, gaming, and social media. Um, but what we're seeing is the demand is not just for, you know, more data and, uh, you know, higher application performance, but also uh, value-added services such as, you know, IoT, augmented reality, virtual reality, robotics, machine learning, and so on. So at Red Hat, we believe that the edge is a way uh, for service providers to get closer to their customers. You know, edge is a strategy to develop insights and experiences uh, at the moment that they're needed. And James, where do you see edge technologies heading? Look, I really like what Ali said. He said that um, edge is really a way for service providers to get closer to the customer, right? And what Juniper has done to address edge is really take some of the hardened products and technologies, routing technologies, especially that have been built for the data center for the cloud and redefine those as software, for example, containerized software um, at the edge sites and take products like CN2 that scale very well and make a lot of the components optional, make it uh, very nimble, very lightweight for the resource profile of edge data centers for edge cloud. Um, so you know, the other things I suppose you could say that we're doing are investing in making sure that we work with the compute such as ARM that is more popular at edge sites. Uh, and as Ali touched on, uh, Juniper has uh, big ambitions in the RIC space, the, the radio intelligent controller, um, to orchestrate 
uh, the end-to-end -end solution from the edge sites uh, and as part of the radio networks all the way back through, I suppose, the edge sites and back to the centralized telco cloud centers uh, for end-to-end -end network slicing. Well, James and Ali, thank you both very much for joining us today. And to watch additional interviews in the Power of Open series, please follow the links below this video. For now, though, thank you for watching and goodbye.